So today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm not going to be making jewelry and I'm not going to crochet, but what I am going to do is make a crochet hook out of this crochet hook mold. I bought these a few months ago and I haven't had a chance to try them out yet. So I figured it'd be fun to make a video on them just to see how they work and if a crochet, if you can actually use the crochet hook after it's done. So I'm hoping it works out. I think I have all my supplies ready here. I um, am only gonna make two of the hooks. I'm going to do the 6.5 millimeter one because this is a size K. Um, I'm more used to the letter sizes, but um, this is the one I use a lot. So I wanna try that one. And I also wanna try the biggest one, which is um, a 10 millimeter one, which is an N size. And I just wanna try that one because I have some little seashells, like some little baby seashells that I want to put in there and see if I can make a crochet hook with seashells in it. I think that'd be just so awesome. So my first crochet hook, I'm just going to do glitter. And um, this is the resin I'm using. And this brand is called Annie Howes. And I've been using this brand for quite a few years and I like it pretty well. It always seems to dry clear and doesn't get all yellowy and stuff. So I've been just sticking with that. And I buy that on Etsy. I'll even put a link in the description. And then I have my plastic gloves here. You always want to use gloves when you're using resin. And some little stuff to stir everything. My seashells. I'm using a little bit of some crystals to put in with those seashells. So I've never used these molds before. But I, you know, like I was saying, I have used the resin. And what I make with the resin are these little keychains. I sell these at Clearwater Beach, obviously, because I have Clearwater Beach, Florida on them. So I start with just that silver bezel and then I glue some glitter on the bottom and then put in whatever I want to put in like these little shells, a starfish, a little charm, and then I just pour the resin over it. So that's what I'm used to doing. So this mold will be quite interesting for me. I'm going to go ahead and mix these together. And by the way, if you are mixing resin, make sure you follow the instructions because if you don't, it may not cure correctly and you may get like a gooey mess and you don't want that. And you want to mix up your resin until it actually runs clear and not cloudy. And it's better to use like small strokes like I'm doing so that way you don't get too many bubbles. I like bubbles but not in my resin. Oh and a few more things I forgot to mention to you guys. I recommend having some type of tissue so that way if you get a drip or something you can clean it up real quick. Also, I have like a clear plastic cutting board underneath here. This is what you can kind of see the reflection on here. And I get these from the Dollar Tree, look like this. And what I did with the molds, I just kind of coated them with some cooking spray. I saw that as a tip online to help you be able to take the mold out once it's already cured. And now I'm gonna start pouring the resin into my mold. And I don't know how easy this is going to be because it's a very small space. I think I'm going to use this popsicle stick. And what I want to do before I get too far ahead of myself is make sure I push some of that resin towards the hook because I'm afraid it's not going to get in there all the way and I'm going to have some weird looking hook at the end. So here comes the fun part, or the messy part, or <laughs> maybe both. But I'm just gonna like pour a little glitter in here. I think I'm gonna have to use a toothpick to get it down in there. Let's see what happens if I do that. shells want to float a little bit. It's weird. I 
So I think I'm done with that. I'm just going to let it dry and cure for, I think I'll do 48 hours because I just want to make sure it's completely dry when I take it out of the mold. So I will be back in about two days. See you guys later. So it's been two full days and I can't wait to see how these turned out. I'm a little nervous on taking this mold off. I did read on the reviews that some people had a problem getting it off and they actually ripped some of the mold getting it off. So I hope that doesn't happen. I did kind of line it with some cooking oil. So um, maybe it'll be easier to get off. So let's see how we do this. So apparently I filled up my mold a little bit too high because it has a little bit of a line right here. But I'm not sure how you would actually do this without having that. But um, it's not like it's sharp or anything. It's not uncomfortable. I might try to sand it down and see how that works. But I think the hook filled in pretty good. I do see like a little bit of bubbles in there. It's not really clear. But that's okay. I'm also kind of wondering if the cloudiness is from the cooking oil. But I think it turned out pretty cute. So I love all the shells in there and the little blue crystals. So let's try this one. I get glitter all over my hands doing this. So I'm wondering this one being a little bit smaller hook, if this will be easier to come off. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, it seems like that's the way to go is just like pull it around the hook to get it off. So this one turned out pretty cute. I love all the sparkly glitter. I can see that um, this one I didn't fill it quite as high, but it still has that line there. So I think I definitely want to sand this down because there are some rough edges. You probably can't see them, but they're kind of like the glitter kind of stuck to the resin, made it a little bit rough there. But that hook filled out pretty good. And I don't really see too many bubbles in there, so that I did good on that one. Oh, and the cool thing is, it actually makes an imprint of the size of the hook. You probably can't see it since it's clear, but it does say 10 millimeters right here. And this one says 6.5 millimeters. I know that's like really hard to see. So I think I'm going to try this hook out using some yarn and just see if I can crochet with it. Um, I probably do want to sand it down eventually, but, but let's try it and see, see what happens. So I'm just going to start out with a few chains. This is a bigger hook than I'm used to. Yeah, I can see it's probably going to get caught on there. That's not good. So it looks like I will need to sand it down, kind of get that edge off of it. So I'll stop that right there and see if I can sand it down and then we try it again. I just used my nail file just to file it down just a little bit, make it smooth and everything. And they do recommend if you're gonna sand off some resin that you use a mask, which of course we all have plenty of face masks. And I think what I'm gonna do is next time I do a batch of resin, I'm just gonna put a couple drops on here and see if I can smooth that out a little bit more and make it shiny again. Let me see how it works now. Yeah, it's a lot smoother now. Still has a little bit of like roughness to it, like the where I sanded it at. So I think if I do put a little bit of that resin on there, that should help. So I would say these molds definitely do work to make crochet hooks. You will have this line here that may bother you, but you can always sand it down. But it's pretty cool. I mean, making your own crochet hook. So let me know in the comments, what do you think of this? Do you think it's worth making or should you just go out and buy some? I think it was a fun little experiment. And I do feel like I will use this crochet hook because it's a nice big crochet hook. And I just love the little seashells in there. They're so fun. So if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye-bye.